Welcome back to another episode of Footy with the Boys. I am here today with Mike, the Scorpion Kick legend, Tracy. Mike, how are we feeling in the new kit? Good, man. Not an AC Milan fan, but I support the Americans. And it's kind of a fun kit, so yeah. Represent. Yeah, it's an interesting kit. One they wore in the, the Champions League this week. Uh, Nick, the Colombian drug lord, Valderrama, how are we doing today? Yeah, we're just perpetuating stereotypes, apparently. God damn it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We're oh, putting... Come on, dude. I'm <laughs> fucking heated. <laughs> Asshole. It's okay. They can't use this in court. Yeah, Nick's, <laughs> Nick's nickname uh, in court is completely false. Mike's, though, he is an IM soccer legend at Michigan State for a cross that came from half field that he not headed, not volleyed, but decided to let it just run in front of it and then scorpion it in to the top corner in a random IM game. Might be the best Probably goal I've seen live ever. The great, yeah, the greatest goal I have seen live, and I don't <laughs> know what's eating it. And it doesn't make much sense. Uh, but what also doesn't make much sense is that England may not have a fifth spot in the Champions League. Mike, wh- what's happening? This is the greatest league in the world, no? But Newcastle bounced Manchester so United. Been, oh, Manchester United bounced. is like double bounced. In what? the mud. Premier League in the mud. You know, Germany. Farmers League? No, no, no. Germany and Italy currently ahead. Um on the point system for increased spots in Champions League next year. Uh, And Spain, right on England's tail, a fraction of a point behind. Um, Spain with four teams going into the knockout round in Champions League. Only Sevilla was eliminated. England, not doing so hot. Arsenal and Man City represent Newcastle and Man U, bottom of the group. And um, Italy representing pretty well as uh, Lazio, AC Milan, or AC Milan goes to Europa League, but Lazio, Inter Milan, and Napoli, Napoli, Napoli. go on to the round, the knockout round. So, yeah, not a good look for England. Um, still a lot that goes into it because Europa League and Conference League are also factored in. And how they do it is a coefficient. So they divide the points by number of teams. It's kind of a weird calculation. Um, it's too much to get your head around this early, I kind of think. But they're not putting themselves in a great position by getting knocked out and uh, not being able to contribute any more points, being that two teams are no longer in competitions. Yeah. I mean, Newcastle, to be fair, was in the group of death. So them being completely out was probably to be expected for them. Although, obviously, you don't want an English team bounced if you're uh, looking for that extra spot. Manchester United, though, that was a very, very advanced One of the easier group. groups. One of the easier and ones. Not just an advanceable group, but if, to, to get last, that's a, that's a tough look for the Prem here. But obviously, they're pretty top-heavy with Man City and Arsenal, and then obviously Liverpool in the Europa League as well. So they should probably get some, some good points off of those guys there. But we will get into our previews for the week. After our previews, we'll always go into that U.S. Men's National Team corner, followed by our lock of the week. And we'll end up today with our one question with Producer P. Guaranteed to be a stupid question, but it'll be a thought piece. Hey, fuck God you, guys. It. If anything, I just it'll be a thought piece. That's all you're going for. You're not asking an intellectual question. I Other might be, dude. Point. Fuck you. <laughs> You know what? I'll take that. Whatever. It's not. Uh, but... we, get in, we get in to our most interesting game of the week. Can spend some time on this one and probably going to have some good laughs at it in the recap. Liverpool, Manchester United, a classic match here. Nick, you're Eric Ten Hag. You're going into this. You have potentially 13 players out for injuries here. What are you telling your squad here? You. Just got bounced out of the Champions League in the last place in your group. You just got absolutely smacked by Bournemouth. And now you're going into a red hot Liverpool team that is in the hottest form of the entire league and top of the table. 
I mean, <laughs> what do you say? I think it's time to get dirty. <laughs> it's time to get dirty with the boys, bro. I think you show them the seven zero scoreline from last year. I think you show them a clip of old uh, old Nico and the footy with the boys just shitting on Man U for three months in a row. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you get them mad, bro. I think you're like, listen, uh, people are doubting on your name. Like this is a this is a motivation game. If you are a, a, a manager of people this is this is when you need it from ten hog we don't need your stupid oh we are playing progressive my head is bald all the stupid shit that he says all the time but uh he just he's got to get the boys pissed because it, it's one of the biggest rivalries in the world um and you know it's not anfield <laughs> like they gotta they have to find a way to get up for this game i think they will get up for this game i think it'll be closer than you think but i mean at Anfield, you you got to take Liverpool. I think. Yeah, I think it's hard to not. Going take after them. the bald game, bro. Yeah, Mike. Uh, obviously, Ten Hag got some fire under his seat. Has had it for really most of the year here, but they're still in a good spot in the table. Liverpool. I mean, Manchester United hasn't been playing good, and we laugh about this. But how serious does Liverpool need to take this as a a real threat of a game? Or is this just another game in the prem for them with the way Man U's not playing maybe their best right now? It's not just another game because of the history of the rivalry. Most years, this is an awesome game to watch. Um, But that being said, Liverpool should be pretty comfortable that they get it done, especially being at Anfield, especially looking at Man U's squad. They lose Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire in the midweek, and they're already strapped for options in the defense. So if you're a Liverpool attacker, you're like, holy shit. It's not if I'm going to score, it's going to be how many and it's going to be when. Is that bad for uh, Liverpool that Veron might be forced to play, though? You go from Harry Maguire to Raphael Veron right. as a, an injury measure. Harry Maguire's been playing some great ball. We'll put that out there. That's, that's true. Maybe not player of the month caliber, but he's been playing, <laughs> he's been playing some good ball. Um, but yeah. I would rather play against a combination of Maguire and Evans than have Rafa Varane out there, for sure. So that makes the choice easier for Ten Hag, and it's most likely a better player. So yeah, that that does mess with Liverpool a little bit. But still, it's going to be the midfield. Um, If I'm Man U, Kabi Manu is definitely starting. He had a small feature um, against Bayern and looked like easily their best player on the field even though he played for 10 minutes. He's progressive. He's quick. He can actually have a fucking touch and find a pass, unlike most of these midfielders. Rambat looks off the pace. McTominay's playing striker. And the rest of the guys are are useless. So I won't be too long-winded about this. I think Liverpool is comfortable. I think they'll get the win. But it's not a walk in the park. Not a walk in the park. We will uh, see... It is a rivalry game, so you really can't say that just based off form. If they weren't rivals, it's going to be an easy pick. This one, I think Man U could get gritty and, and maybe get a, a 1-0 loss rather than a more embarrassing one. But when the difference is Salah versus Garnacho, is that Manchester United's best wing at the moment? Yeah. Does Marcus Rashford play? Ooh. Do you guys expect to see him back in the lineup? I think big uh, game like this, you gotta you gotta bring him back back into the field. I don't think so. Who knows you don't what think Ten Hag's lesson? I don't <laughs> think he's gonna play. You know who will? Jaden Sancho. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty awesome. Return Jaden Sancho will be playing FIFA the night before, and that's about all he's gonna be playing this weekend. <laughs> so uh, that is hard. Definitely the highlight of the week. Uh, but we go into what I would think is probably one of the more entertaining games of the weekend. It is our one of the hottest teams in the league, our Toffees, versus a real tough contender in Burnley here. Mike, the Toffees have been flying. One of the hottest teams, the Premier League Instagram in the live table for like the last four weeks, decided not to show Everton in there for some reason, <laughs> although we have... Both points. So there's a lot of disrespect. Is this a time for Everton to just smack down on Burnley and 
such a, a high stakes, entertaining game of football? Hell yeah, man. Um, it, it is. It definitely is. But can I say that with a whole lot of confidence? No. <laughs> like, this seems like a, a trap game. Uh, this is Dyke's old team. Um, and then I can be more confidence. We're missing a whole lot of guys for this game. Some major players. Uh, Brathwaite's on suspension. Um, Ghana Gay's on suspension. Ashley Young and Seamus Coleman are both not available through injury. So we're going to see rotation throughout the midfield and the defense, which does scare me a little bit because our lineup's been so consistent, not a whole lot of change. Um, but we should win this game. No doubt about it. We're a much better team. Um, so if anything less than a win is very disappointing. Yeah. And Nick, from the Burnley side here, you're going up against an Everton team that's on some really great form. But nevertheless, they're still not too far in front of a Burnley in, in terms of the table. This is a huge, huge game if they want to avoid relegation. What would be the message from Vincent Company to his men here to get a result against Sean Deitch's Everton? Dude, I think I I love the form Everton is on. I love uh I love everything they've been doing. I'm happy for the boys. It's fun watching them. Their goals always bring me so much joy. Like they're either funny or bangers. It's just incredible. Like it's, it's, options, it's, yeah. a, it's the weirdest scoring team in the Prem. Like, it's either, like, Mikalenko scoring a volley or Beto, like, trying not to trip over himself for 30 yards. Like, they're fantastic. Um, but I think for Burnley, like, this is a game to to try and revert a little bit to, to those old championship days uh, last year, trying to play some real football. Like, they they got here by playing some really slick, really possession-based, really, really front-footed kind of soccer. And I think that... There's gonna the way that Sean Dyke sets up his team, there's gonna be opportunities for them to do that. And so I think it's a good moment for them to try and and play a little bit of football, try and break down this Everton team. Um, because I think if you get into a game of like playing it ugly, like I think Everton wins that game pretty easily. They're probably the best in the prem at doing it right now. So um if I'm if I'm in some company, I'm using that big head of mine and and finding some of the tactics from last year because I mean you 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 got here playing a certain way. I say try it again uh, against an Everton team. I think they could find some joy there. Yeah. And I'm wondering if Everton does have a more possession, more attack-based style against a Burnley team that has been pretty bad. Uh, but we'll see how kind of those styles clash here. And maybe both teams just won't really want to attack unless it's a counter. So we'll see how that I'm plays. excited to... Uh... I'm excited to see hopefully a Garner Onana midfield pivot because I think that's their best like midfield pivot and honestly a pretty solid one when it comes to the rankings in the Prem. So hopefully Adrisa Gana Gay having to hold bench in this one uh, with the suspension, I believe. I think that I think that hopefully it'll come together and, and maybe open Sean Dyke's eyes a little bit and maybe that's our starting midfield for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I, I think so, a, yeah. a big thing to watch is... Dominic Calvert-Lewin, see if if our forwards can start getting some goals, and, and him especially, as uh, he has not been the most uh, fine form recently, I guess is the, the nicest way to say it. Uh, but we move on to a game that if you asked three weeks ago, would this be a very interesting game? We would have certainly said, no, it's going to be a blowout, but this time... With the form that both of these teams are in, they kind of clash in the middle here for a really interesting game. It's Newcastle-Fulham. Newcastle obviously just got bounced from the Champions League, have not been in great form in the Premier League. Fulham, quite the opposite. Two 5-0 victories in a row. A team that, at the start of the season, could not buy a goal if they had Man City's money. But now all of a sudden, Raul Jimenez is the second coming of R9, hitting back heels in past goalkeepers. This is a kind of a case of form versus talent, I think. Newcastle has the talent. Fulham has the most form you could want. Mike, you can choose one of these two teams. Who are you choosing here? 
Newcastle. Because they're at home, because they're going to get the bias from the man in the middle. That's as simple as my, my explanation. <laughs> the right. Fulham's scored boatloads of goals, that's for sure. 13 goals in the last three, which has really come out of nowhere. Um, Newcastle has been really struggling, can't find a result, even when it looks like they're going to go going to go their way, especially against AC Milan this week. And then everything explodes in their face. Um, this is the one that they need. I think they'll get it done. All right. And I just want to say before I, I toss it over to you, Nick, here, watching the Milan-Newcastle game, man, everything that you've been ragging on was exemplified in that game like crazy. Trippier should have had multiple yellow cards, never got one. Joe Linton was going in crazy. They were they were just throwing in stuff. Callum Wilson straight up ran into and knocked over Mike Mignon away from the play when he had the ball after a corner. Nothing at all. No warning, nothing. They play just such a force the referee to be on the spot type of, of game here. Do you think Mignon that plays over? Yellow you card. Think... They gave him the yellow card. Well, yeah. Forbidden about it. For him being upset over getting knocked up, but <laughs> Nick, Newcastle plays that type of game where he puts the referee on the spot. It's worked out for them. Do you think it works out against a team like Fulham? I've seen some good form, but with antics like that and the talent side on Newcastle, do you think Fulham has a shot? And what what would that be for them? Fulham definitely has a shot. These wins they've gotten have like they're neither of them were. They were, uh, they were surprising, but they weren't accidents because they fucking dominated those two games. Um, and with the shit form that Newcastle's in, not it, like, is it, are they playing poorly? But it just feels like everyone fucking hates themselves in Newcastle right now. Like, no one's happy. Everyone's pissed off. Eddie Howe's just, like, looking with this blank face on the sidelines all the fucking time. So this is, this is a team that's not informed, that does not have really the morale, or I don't really think the togetherness in the squad to, to really be able to have any sort of confidence going into games. Now, Mike is 100% right. All you need to know is that there's Premier League referees there and that it's at St. James. And I don't blame Newcastle for playing that way, by the way, because those are the greatest, like, fans in the Prem, and that atmosphere is insane. So, you know, put it on the refs. And whether it's corruption or incompetence, like, the refs aren't going to make the right call. We know that. Like, it's very clear. So, um, I think, yeah, I think, I think Newcastle should come away winners here. I think they will come away winners here. But to write off a Fulham team that just won, like, aggregate, what, 10-0 these past two games, that's a that's a stupid mistake. And if they're still, like, stewing over the weekend, this is a place where they can get caught. Yeah, I think this is a pretty interesting game of just the clashing of forms. Uh, one thing to note on the U.S. men's national team side is Tim Ream has been missing from their... Uh, starting 11, and then the entire squad list uh, for the last two games with those two 5-0 victories. So he might find it a little tough to get back into it until we get into a little bit later down the stretch when those games start coming a little more hot and heavy. Uh, this week does not have the most amazing matchups, I will say. But next one up is a game that I think is extremely important for one of our title challengers. It is Manchester City, and they're going up against Crystal Palace. Normally, yes, you would say Man City, Crystal Palace, Man City will smash them. Man City has not been in good form recently. They need these points because of that bad form, and Crystal Palace is just a constant middle-of-the-table, lower-middle-table team that is just a bit of a pain in the ass for every team to have to play. Mike, do you think Crystal Palace being that constant annoyance to top teams having to play against them can get something done here, knowing that Man City is not in the greatest form, has not figured out their best lineups, and have a lot of players out? I think they'll do um, a little bit to annoy them, but no. I don't think there's any real chance that they, they get a result here. Um, 
for how much they annoyed Liverpool, they still haven't been able to get a result in four games. Um, they lose against Luton. They lose against Bournemouth in really unconvincing fashion. And yeah, they score against Liverpool and scare them a little bit, but they can't see the game out. Um, and that's because, you know, their midfield's so weak and their defense is not playing that, that well either. Um, and the issues that they cause themselves, especially Jordan Ayew's red card, that never helps. So no discipline. Um, interesting game for Man City. I hope we see some changes. I know they played weaker opposition in Champions League this week. But some of those younger guys they had in the lineup really looked electric. They were taking people off the dribble. They were creating their own chances, which Man City's lacked a lot in the past couple of games. Um, this Micah Hamilton kid in particular, who played up top for them this week, looked like he has a proper shout to get some minutes in the Premier League. So I hope we soon see it sooner than later. Yeah, it may be... Uh... A bit early, though, to be throwing them on in a, a stretch in the Premier League uh, that they really need points. Nick, what do you need to see from Man City here for you to uh, to feel that the the machine that they have been over the last five years is is back to running? Yeah, I think Pep just got to keep it simple a little bit. I think Mike has rightfully called him out a couple times here on the pod for just some really... I mean, you, like, understand where he's coming from with some of these lineup decisions because, like, certain players have certain traits that you think would work. Um, but just have players play their natural role. You have a ton of talent. Uh, I I hate the call to start some of these young kids, I will say. It's one thing to play whoever the fuck in the Champions League that we've never heard of but have many of fans, so love you guys. Uh, but, I mean, it's it's much, much different going up against that opposition than any Premier League game. Um, so I think you start – these flags, you're 100% right. These are a needed three points. Like, anything less than three points is is really, really bad for Man City. And, like, that's where I think alarm bells start ringing a little bit. So start your most experienced side. Start uh, the people you can trust. Don't get too cute. And I think you come away with three points here. I think a bit of, of water has been splashed in Man City's face after their kind of lackadaisical path to just constantly dominating the, the league. This year, it's extremely competitive at the top, extremely competitive throughout. And I think have just throwing tactics at the wall and seeing what works is no longer working. You have to have the best tactics on the day and put out your best lineups to be, be able to to win a title this year with how competitive it is. Uh, but one team that they are fighting for that title with, it is Arsenal. They're going to be going up against a Brighton squad that has been very up and down with their form, probably struggling with a bit of depth from their European uh, competitions. Uh, but Nick, as an Arsenal fan, coming off a loss, now just one point behind Liverpool, you do want to keep pace here, but it is still a Brighton team that is threatening. What are you looking to see as the keys to the game here between Arsenal and Brighton? Yeah, I honestly feel really confident. It's at the Emirates. Um, the boys bounced back well. The midweek Champions League game provided a rest for a lot of the star boys. Only uh, the two center backs and uh, Havertz kept their spot. Um, so... You know, I think it's going to be a refreshed team. I think it's going to be a team that's looking to do some damage. I know Brighton's not going to, like, lock up and, uh, and like, just park the bus for 90 minutes. So uh, those are the teams that usually excite me to see this Arsenal team play against because I think people forget how uh, how dangerous we are when teams aren't just having 11 behind the ball. So um, I'm expecting goals. I think it could come from both sides. But regardless, multi-goal victory for the Arsenal here. Um yeah, I feel pretty confident. And Mike, this is a, a Brighton side that, although has been up and down a bit recently, have a lot of quality players that can make these games very scary for an opposition like Arsenal. Do you see them being able to pull this out? Or maybe not do you see them being able to pull it out, but what what are the odds that they can pull something like this off? Um... The, the odds are low, let's be honest here. <laughs> Arsenal's a much better team. Um, and 
they're going to be well rested where Brighton really won't be. They started a lot of their, their main guys today against Marseille, got a victory, created a lot, but having a little rest going into the weekend means a lot, especially when you have a strapped um, squad like Brighton does. So I'd say their chances are low, but um, things they could capitalize on if Zinchenko's starting, I like Adingra's chances against him, especially because he's so fast and he can exploit that space that Zinchenko's sure to leave when he comes up in the midfield on the attack. So if they can capitalize on a counter there, that's a big chance for them to score. If they get set pieces, there's a chance to score. Um, but they're really going to have to defend well. I expect Arsenal to put out you know, their best 11. They need this these points in this tight race. So it's going to come down to really defending and then taking their, their few chances. Yeah. And I think uh, a big part of this will be Raya or Ramsdale. They have not looked uh, necessarily like, like Arsenal would have wanted them to when they thought they had such a great goalkeeper battle. Uh, did not think the battle would be who can make more fuck ups uh, in the season but here we are. They're both uh, looking for some some good form and some good saves that prop them back up. Uh, but we move really in quickly. Into... Uh, shout out to uh, shout out to Mikel Arteta. Beat the allegations. I don't know if you saw, but Arsenal hired a fucking defense yeah. lawyer to defend him from the from the, P, the PGMOL. Uh, so he he is not getting any consequences for his uh, comments after the Newcastle game. He made an argument. Apparently, his lawyer that. Uh, that when he meant disgrace, he actually thought it was the word disgracia, which is in Spanish, which means which is like closer to meaning and really unlucky. Uh, so instead of like instead of like Liar. corrupt, like disgrace. So I don't know if you've seen the memes all over the internet. Like there's just photos of Saul Goodman right next to Mikel Arteta, like just beating the allegations. Uh, in the shock of a century, an independent organization finds Arteta. Okay, when uh, when the FA was dead set on a hundred percent suspending him for the Liverpool game, uh, so shout out to Arteta, shout out to our lawyers, uh, big up to the manager, big up to the Alfred. lawyers, big oh, up good man. That's uh, that's certainly an argument to uh, to have that let off, but you know what? What's a little perjury here and there when you're on a a title <laughs> race? <laughs> what? We move to uh, another team that has had their fair share of uh, lawyers involved recently. It is Chelsea versus Sheffield. Honestly, this could be an interesting game. If Chelsea <laughs> cannot finish the million chances that they get versus Sheffield, how much of a rope are you giving Pochettino here? If you can't get it done versus Sheffield, is that it, Mike? Yeah, he's on a small leash, man. Um, you got to beat Sheffield. I know Sheffield just got to win when we said they're shit, and I've repetitively said that they're shit because they are. But Chelsea's, they got to do it. I don't care. If they finish a fraction of their chances, they should still have multiple goals. Um, so just put out a strong lineup and, you know, if you can't win this game, you don't need to fire him, dude. He'd probably just want to leave. You say, fuck it, I'm out. Uh, Nick, from anyway. the other side, there are some positives for Sheffield. After that win last week, a lot of people were calling them potentially the worst side ever in the Premier League. Now they sit at eight points, and you would assume – they would be able to beat Derby County's record low of just 11 points and throughout the entire season. What do you think that means to the fans and the community of Sheffield? Okay, nothing. They're horrible. <laughs> they scored a uh, chanting at their team like, you are shit, a couple of weeks. And the manager after the game was like, yeah. <laughs> They're <Yeah>. not wrong. <laughs> so, uh, no, it doesn't mean anything. Um, I hope they get a result. I think it helped get some of the belief going and maybe they can get out of the bottom three, but um, I don't know. Their last one came from a wonder goal. They're going to need one or two more to uh, to have any chance this weekend. Yeah. To be fair, they, the fans aren't wrong. They are shit, and 
two to three years ago when they were in the Premier League last time, they were also shit. They could not score goals, like, at all. Like, Rian Brewster was up there. Ollie McBurnley still was. They were just terrible then. Crazy good in the, the championship all of a sudden, and then crazy bad now. It's just, they kind of found that plateau, I think. It was their championship level. Decent ch- championship team, not Prem at all. Uh, but now we go to two teams that uh, could be Champions League contenders. Wolves, and, you know, maybe on a, a lesser note, West Ham. I say that because team in the uh, producer D, uh, I just figure I could uh, be nice to him after I said he was asking a stupid question. Uh, but honestly, it should be a pretty good game here. Mike, do you think West Ham bounces back from their 5-0 humiliation versus Fulham? Or do you think it's Wolves continue to get some scrappy results out of here? Um. It's a tight one, tight one to call because Wolves didn't play all that well past weekend, and West Ham had a return to form today against a pretty good Freiburg team, where they got the two zero win. So, I I would like this to be a pretty close game. Losing five zero to Fulham is fucking crazy. Like conceding that many amount that amount of goals to any team is just horrific, and not being able to create anything against Fulham, who's been subpar in the back um it's really really tough so yeah i think they're going to play much better than they did that game um i like this for a draw for a draw Ooh. nick he's he's going the middle right, like Palmer. a little too scared to uh give a real a real man's result we'll see. Show, the happen, dude. Show, the, show the hair on your chest and pick a real winner I say it's a draw. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that Uh, is it for our episode today. Uh... (laughs) No, dude, fuck it. Give me, give me West Ham. Uh, I think if I'm not wrong, uh, for at least part of the game, Bowen was kind of playing like as a nine or false nine. Uh, he is their best finisher by far. So I kind of like, uh, I kind of like that, and hoping to see a little bit more of it in the prem. Um, especially because he's like a really direct and dynamic attacker, but he doesn't do a ton like beating people one on one. So I feel like he's a little bit he 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 has really good instincts, and so on the wing he's he's a great player, obviously. But I think that he could work as, as a kind of nine. So I'd like to see him there. I think he could work. He's a great uh, ball striker, really good finisher. Um, you know, just strikes balls in the box uh, as we do. You know what I like? Balls in the box, all the box, all day. You know, Firm, solid contact, easy finishes, you know, love finishing in the box. So, um, what are we talking about? Box talk. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Uh, hey, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> what's that? yeah. All right. Uh, I'll take Wolves in this one. I think they're due for a big result. We haven't had a big one to talk about for them in a while. And I think this could be a, a good one for them with West Ham. Probably uh, a little low on confidence after getting absolutely smacked by uh, West Ham there and Jedi Robinson stealing their lunch money. Uh, but we're we not losing to... another game this season. If we lose, we what fold. Do you mean by that? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, if we lose, we, we go fold. To, uh, more hams. There is a lot of hams in these names. It is Nottingham versus Tottenham, and this game should not be close. But Tottenham's also just not in good form at all. Do you think Matty Turner can pitch a shutout for a 0-0 draw here? Or is there a shot that Nottingham gets the fir- like a goal in the first five minutes and then gets murdered 5-1? Nick, what do you th- <laughs> what do you give the better odds to there? Uh, welcome to Footy with the Boys, where we talk about box and ham. <laughs> ham is a festive topic. This is Christmas time. <laughs> Um, uh, let's say that Maddie Turner, you know, channels some of that gunner blood in him, channels some of that uh, American patriotism. He's going to pitch a shutout. We saw Tim Howard versus Belgium. We saw Mitty, Maddie Turner uh, versus Tottenham Hotspurs this weekend. Give me, uh, give me Nottingham Forest with a little cheeky 1-0 win at home. 
Mike, Nick has been the expert on Tottenham. Even predicted the, the draw versus Man City. It's true. This guy doesn't miss. You, I don't hey, miss. What the fuck is he talking you about? Rock you, you, <laughs> you rocking with the pick? You rocking with the pick? Steve Cooper fall off the face of the earth and fucking Brian Clough <laughs> came back to coach. Like, what the fuck are we talking about, man? Tottenham just whooped Newcastle. 4-1. Nottingham hasn't had a result in a month. They they just got a draw. They got heased up by Fulham. Everton beat the brakes off them. Like, what are we talking about here? Not Tot, Tottenham's going to score boatloads of goals this game. It's going to be a fucking slaughter. It's going to be... <laughs> the hams are coming out, dude. And uh, Tottenham's looking like the butcher. That's all I'm saying. Whoa, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Oh, I love when he butchers my hams. I mean... Look at this guy. Uh, one thing to note is, I believe in in January is the uh, Asian Asian Cup. Sun will be out. Tottenham need these points. They need as many points as possible because once Sun is out, that is their entire offense gone. So, Bumble. although a game versus Tottenham might not be uh, high ticket value. It's definitely a game that they need to make sure they're maximizing their points off of, especially because of all the dropped points they had previously. But finally, time for our last game of the week, and it is including one of our contenders for the title and one of our contenders for an exterminated hive. It is the Brentford Bees versus the title contender Aston Villa. Aston Villa just beat Man City and Arsenal. And the Bees have looked shit. Back is to there back any like Drake, chance? bro? They have the not Bees looked shit. Dozen. Bro, they have not looked. They have one win in their last five. They've lost every other one. They have not looked shit. They have gone to sleep for winter. And Aston Villa has woken. Oh, well, they've been awake. And they're staying awake. They're on some Red Bull. They're on some unnamed goods. Nick, <laughs> you seem to be a bit of a hater of Villa here. No, no, I like Villa. I specifically Ooh. love Douglas Luiz, by the way. I've brought him up a couple times now, but he is very good. Uh, classic Villa letdown spot. Classic, oh, we're, we're one of the big boys. We're contending. Give me a draw here. I like, uh, I like Brentford. I can give me some Thomas Frank, a, a little bit of spice. 2-2, two, two, uh, Bees get a draw at home. Mike, good evening. Why, good evening. why not? Why not Unai Emery to win the title here? Why not? Maybe why not? because there's better teams. I don't know. But why not though? Um, dude, I like Villa chances here. The letdown is a little scary. It seems like we've seen this uh, this chapter before. And the one thing they have going for them though is they rested almost everybody today. Uh, Douglas Luiz played, Pau Torres played in the Conference League, but a lot of the main guys got to kick their feet up. So I like that. Um, I don't like them to get a commanding win here, but I like them to to see out the three points. Yeah, I think Villa has just an unreal amount of confidence, and confidence is very important in this game. So I think that can carry over, especially against a team like Brentford, who is searching for that confidence. They have not been in good form. Aston Villa, sneaky title contenders. Sneaky. Sneaky, you sneaky. Use that word a little loosely, Jerry. Seriously, bro. You toss this word out to every fucking team in the prime. <laughs> bro, I, I, I just, listen. I'm calling it how it is. They're in third place. They're above Man City. Back. They're in the saying? league, hence they have a chance to win the league. Rest for case. Technically, they they are contender. As is yeah. Sheffield United for a, a dark horse campaign for the second half of the season. As is Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham, yes. If they had <laughs> if they have James Madison available, they're back to being a contender. Oh, they're not too far off. I mean, they're only seven points. Easy peasy, just three games dropped by Liverpool. Uh, but 
Enough of that. Enough of the title contender talk. Let's go into our next segment, which is the U.S. men's national team corner. Oh, you don't really Christian. care about the cherries and the headers, huh? Didn't want to talk no, about. I, I really do the not. Of the league, I, huh? I, I'm leaving Luton off of this. They have already been relegated. I don't <laughs> care for them. We talked about Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, Sheffield's an interesting team because they're playing Chelsea. Okay. okay. But do you, do you have any burning thoughts about the Luton game? No, I, I don't. I just wanted to poke a little fun at you. <laughs> uh, it could be a cool Nick, game. Any, any burning thoughts about Luton Town versus Portman? Listen, if there's one thing I know, it's my cherries. They are not winning this game. <laughs> there's one thing. It is when it's a sure thing, it is not at all a sure thing. There's no chance they win this game. That is, that is some uh, valuable analysis there uh i got a little ahead of myself i suppose i think the uh, the fans need to know that bournemouth was not winning for you know betting purposes uh but we go into a pulisic goal in mike's kit right there for ac milan versus newcastle sent newcastle not with that goal but as one of the two out of the champions league out of Europe entirely and keeps AC Milan in the Europa League. So he'll still be playing in the midweek. So big goal there. Probably his biggest goal for AC Milan yet. Uh, obviously could not get the job done because PSG uh, had some corruption in their Newcastle game to get a penalty in the last second. Uh, but, you know, hey, that's, that's life. Uh, also in the Champions League, Ricardo Pepe. Gets the start versus Arsenal, and there are no empty minutes there. He gets an assist, just a goal contribution machine, that man. Uh, and Malik Tillman had a hell of a performance, was picking out passes like crazy this game, outside of the boot for a lot of them for some reason, and just curving them straight into the path of people running forward. He was very, very good in that game versus Arsenal. I mean, that's really it. Matt Turner back, Tim Ream uh, missing from the squad. So not too too many crazy things happening in the world. Uh, Haji Wright did get a goal for Coventry, I will say. So that's off the hammer. Yes. Nasty nutmeg. Nasty, Nasty little yes. nutmeg. The, the bench You're reaction to Cam on that one as well. Uh, so Gino Des is always going to be saucy, and he's always going to post his highlights on the Instagram story, so I always bet on that. Uh, but now for our locks of the week, and Nick, I'll throw it to you. You are backing your boys here. What are you going with? Yeah, I said a lot of goals, and I'm expecting it. Arsenal at the M's give me four to one over the Brighton. The Brighton, the mighty Brighton, four to one to Arsenal. There, uh, I will be going with. The current league leaders, Liverpool, they are going to win 3-0 versus Manchester United. Last time I chose a 3-0 scoreline against Manchester United, it was a green. So we're hoping for the same. Man U might be the new Sheffield. Year to year first. Uh, Mike, what is your lock of the week? I'm playing with fire. I'm taking Man City over Crystal Palace. They've burned me twice already. But this seems pretty safe. I'm thinking Man City 2, Crystal Palace 0. I think that's a pretty decent pick for, for Man City. Really needing to focus in on this one. And that leaves just one thing left in our show. It is the one question with Producer P. Quite the wild card. Producer P, take it away. <clears throat> So uh, I would like you all to first look at this picture that I'm pulling up. Uh, I did have to fuck with the layout a little bit, so I apologize for the technical difficulties uh, to everyone watching. However, oh my god, it's his penis! <laughs> oh my god, how'd you know? Do you? <clears throat> oh, oh, okay, wow. There he is. So this is the most cursed picture. I <laughs> I I looked up Kanye West in soccer jersey, and this is what came up. <laughs> but uh my question why 
<laughs> I've seen real pictures of him in a jersey before. <laughs> I didn't see any. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, my question it looks like is: a bug. <laughs> Look at how fucked up his face is. It's like some AI thing. Ah. <laughs> what is the question based off of this? <laughs> Who is the Kanye West of soccer? Now, I want to frame this in a very specific way. Uh, that being, who is like, who's the guy that's like super talented and and can really come out and do a fucking banger of a performance, but then as soon as someone puts a mic up to him, shit goes way sideways and you never know what the fuck the guy's going to say. I got Jeez. two names. Someone want to you this? Well, the player I would say is probably Zlatan. That's what I would think. Mm. Not direct, but um, not as not as anti-Semitic as Kanye West, maybe <laughs> though. The other guy is Jose Mourinho. Okay. Just based on the fact, talented coach, you put him on the the mic, you're gonna get something quotable. Not I'm sure what's gonna like a, a Luis Suarez because he's. Had some very racist moments uh, in the past, but also That's not great. bad. I have no idea why, and don't press me because I don't think I can explain it. But the first name that came to mind was Dimitri Payet. <laughs> I don't know. I just feels like you know streets will never forget either of these two. <laughs> like, like I we were there for Kanye's peak. It was awesome. Artists. We were there for Payet's peak. It was awesome. Now we're kind of like. Oh, <laughs> Are we feel about this guy? <laughs> so I don't know. That's what I'll say. <laughs> okay. Very well. Jared, who do you think? What did you say, Jared? Oh. Okay, who did I say? He said Luis Suarez. Oh, oh Luis yeah, Luis Suarez. Suarez. He said yeah, some uh, not great, not great things said or uh, reported about him in terms of. Some hateful things, and I just imagine, you know what? Hey, that reminds me a bit of Kanye, but he was also an amazing striker. Yeah, best striker <laughs> of the generation, possibly the best rapper of the generation. Yeah, there's some comparisons. Definitely some I don't comparison. hate it. It has to be, I think it has to be more of like a really cocky, but is kind of like past his prime, but still just as cocky. I mean, is Neymar fit in there? No, I feel like Neymar just disappears kind of doesn't really Man. disappear <laughs> racist ronaldo question mark what does he <laughs> have to be racist <laughs> Dude, the saudi seen, league saudi league is telling me he has 50 like... goals <laughs> he does have 50 goals okay in the saudi league <laughs> uh, dude. man you could use a goal scorer <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> they fucking got rid of his ass. <laughs> what, what, what do you think of Harry Maguire? That's so mean. <laughs> I don't know who that is more mean to. <laughs> that's just shitty to both of them. That's a debate. That's a, that's a question right there. Is it more, more offensive to Harry Maguire or Kanye West to be compared to each other? <laughs> Anyways, to, uh, to wrap... To wrap up this conversation, I uh, I definitely thought Palmer's question would just be pull up this photo and it was me like, would you hit? <laughs> I was be like, no. <laughs> he looks like he got hit, dude. <laughs> Look at his fucking face. Oh. We'll say he's wearing a mask, but that is uh, AI <laughs> art. He looks like he got st- he's like allergic and he got stung by like two bees. <laughs> yes. Yeah, is that a right, enough, uh, Kanye West on the talk. We have uh, not that many actual bangers this week, but definitely some interesting storylines to follow. We've ran through it all. We'll see you on Sunday to run through all the results. There's bound to be some funny storylines anytime there's a Liverpool-Manchester United game in recent memory. But until then, follow, subscribe, hit the noties, do whatever you want. Send it to your friends. Send it to your grandma. Get us popping. Until next time. <laughs> Deli Ali, back in training. Hope that's off ease. <laughs>